In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to close accounts. Uh, at the end of an accounting cycle, it's important to close out certain accounts so that at the beginning of the accounting cycle, uh, you'll, uh, start, you'll start out fresh and ready to go. Uh, and we'll, we'll just, we've discussed the reasons for that previously, uh, but for, for now we'll just talk about how to do that. First of all, uh, which accounts are you going to close? And the answer to that is, first of all, you need to close the temporary accounts. And this is something that you're going to need to memorize. Uh, you're going to need to memorize which accounts you need to close. You'll need to close revenue, you'll need to close expenses, you'll need to close withdrawals, and you'll need to close income sum. You'll need to close those four accounts. Two of these we've encountered already. In revenue and expenses, those are on the income statement. Also, withdrawals is on the statement of owner's equity, and income summary is a new account. The accounts that are permanent, you'll notice something about these accounts here. These accounts are the accounts on the balance sheet. These are the accounts that are going to stick around from period to period. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to start by doing these accounts in T accounts, and then in the next video, we're going to do these. Uh, closing entries in the general journal and the general ledger. So uh, here are again the steps in closing, the steps that you need to walk through as you're closing. First, you'll need to close uh, the revenue accounts uh, if there's more than one, or just the revenue account to income summary. Sometimes the revenue account is called fees earned uh, or something like that. Um, also, you'll need to close expenses to income summary and then uh, income summary to capital and in, and then withdrawals to capital as well. And again, this these steps are steps that you're going to need to memorize. You're going to need to know these by heart. So I have here a sample problem. This has uh, the chapter five is really about wrapping up what's going on. The closing closing is about what's wrapping up and uh, about wrapping up what's going on at the end of the month. So what I have here is a bunch of data from a, a month's worth of transactions, or at least a month's worth of simulated transactions in uh, one of our made, one of our made up problems. We have T accounts, there's a transaction here, the first one is a transaction to cash and capital, there's the in initial investment in the business, and then it looks like there's some rent expense that we paid, uh, and then there's transaction C, there's revenue. Uh, if you want to, you can put, pause the video and look through that. Um, we also have the general journal. The, uh, we talked about the general journal in a, in a previous section. There's cash, capital, and then what exactly that transition, that transaction was about. And on down, there's the first month's rent, etc. And then, uh, as we've discussed earlier, there's the ledger accounts. And here they are. Here's that first transaction, April one, posting reference general journal. There's the account number. 111, which, uh, which links here, um, and, and there's the general journal on page one. And then there's that first posted entry in the cash account, and then we can also find the capital account, um, which is a general ledger account 511. And so you can scroll down through that. There's 311, um, 511. There's the capital account, and sure enough, there is that posted uh, general. Uh, ledger account. So the first thing I want to do after I rename this is the chart of accounts sheet. The first thing I want to do is to do this in T accounts. Uh, T accounts are a good tool for thinking about what's going on in an accounting setting. So we'll, we'll look at what's going on here and again we'll have to think about Okay, which accounts do I need to close? And I'm going to make a notation on here. Um, I need to close, and you can, if you've memorized, you know this, um, and you might want to pause and make some flashcards so you can memorize these accounts. You'll need to close revenue, expenses, withdrawals, and income summary. So I'm just going to mark these on here, the ones that I need to close. I need to close revenue. I need to close expenses, and there are three expenses in this problem here. I need to close telephone expense. I need to close supplies expense. I need to close withdrawals. I want to 
here so we can see that. And I'll need to close eventually in come summary. So now I've marked the, the accounts that I need to close. And what it means to close it is I'm going to make it equal to zero. So the first account I'm going to close is revenue. Revenue is uh, a credit account, which means it increases, it grows on the credit side. And so to make it zero, I'm going to need to uh, I'm going to need to debit this account. So I'm going to debit it. This will be transaction H for thousand dollars. And in double entry accounting, that means that I'm going to have to put a credit somewhere, and I'm going to credit thousand dollars in income summary. So there's that, and that, and that's really what it means to close revenue to income summary. That's all it really means. I'm going to take whatever is in rev in the revenue account, and I'm going to uh, debit that for amount, that amount, so that this account, if I were to tally up this T account at the end of the month, it would equal zero. And that's my goal in closing. So I've got so I've closed revenue to income summary. Now I need to close expenses to income summary. And I'm going to do this all in a single transaction. I don't have any supplies expense right now, but I'm going to close rent and telephone expense to income summary. So I'll do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much. Uh, of these I have total. How many, how many expenses I have total? So I've got $700 in rent expense and then $120 total, that's 40 plus 80 in telephone expense. And the total of those is 820. And this is the amount that I'm going to debit in, in, uh, in income summary. This is going to be my total uh, rent expense plus telephone expense is 820. I'm going to close them all together. This will be transaction I for $820. And then I can I can credit rent expense for $700. And I can credit telephone expense for $120. And I've got the same amount I've got uh, th this is this is fair for um, double entry purposes. I've got the same amount of cr uh, debits as I do credits. I have eight hundred and twenty dollars worth of credits there, and I've got eight hundred and twenty dollars worth of credits on the other side. So it, it's going to balance out. My T accounts are going to balance out overall. But I can also say that now I've closed this rent expense account. That's equal to zero. Can say the same thing about telephone expense. If I add, if I um, add downward, add downward, and then subtract across, that comes out to zero. So I've closed my rent expense. That's the second account. That's the second step here in the closing process. Now I'm not going to worry about posting just yet because that's something that'll happen when I'm using the general journal and the general ledger. And since I'm just using T accounts, I don't have to do that. So now step three, I have to close income summary to the capital account. So let me do that next. Um, here's income summary, and here's my capital account. So the question I need to ask myself is, what do I need to do to get income summary to equal zero? Well, I've got $1,000 in credits and $820 in debits. This means I think about this for a minute. That's a thousand dollars and eight hundred and twenty. Um, so I'm going to take a thousand dollars minus eight hundred and twenty. That's equal to one hundred and eighty dollars. Um, if I put one hundred and eighty dollars, I put one hundred and eighty dollars on the credit side of this account. That will mean that that will bring this account to, I'm sorry, if I put that on the debit side, that will make this account zero. 820 plus 180 is $1,000. $1,000 on the other side means that's going to work out to zero dollars. This is transaction J. But now, 
I've got to do double entry. And what that means is I'm going to have to put something on the credit side. And I'm going to close this account to capital. Thousand, and then we've got 100,000 plus $180 equals 100,000 uh, $180. This is what this account, uh, this is the new balance on this account. I'm not going to do that yet, but you can see what's happening here. Um, capital increases on the credit side, and since I have the $180, I've increased my capital, which makes sense in an accounting context. Capital, uh, when, when I have an income, when I have more revenues than I have expenses, my capital is going to go up. And you can see, sure enough, there it is. It's going up by $180. And so now the last account I need to, to close. Let's see, we can go back to my steps. I've done step three. That's done. Now I need to do step four. I need to close withdrawals to the capital account. So let me do that. Um, withdrawals is at $650 on the debit side. In order to make that zero, I'm going to have to credit it for $650. So this is transaction K. And I'm going to put this, and of course, I'm going to debit the capital account for $650. And then, as I've done with my T accounts previously, I'm going to add downward and then subtract across. So I'm at $100 and $180. That's the total of, that's the total of these two accounts right here. And I'm going to subtract $650. And this, 99,530, that's the remainder, my remaining balance in my capital account. So now I have, uh, and also this account here, is zero. It's a debit account, so I'll put that zero on the debit side. So now I've, I've closed out all of my all of my accounts that I need to close. And so now I can make what's called post-closing trial balance. I have a regular trial balance. This was the accounts and what they were at before I closed my accounts out. But now I can make a post-closing trial balance of what things are worth after I close. So I'll go back here. And again, I'm going to add downward and subtract across. line there. So first, on the debit side, and I don't really need a calculator for that, it's $101,000 on the credit side. I'm going to need another, another row here. Maybe two more rows. There. So I've got, that's what I have on my credit side, and on my debit side I'm going to have to add up all these columns here. Draw all this whole set of numbers here, 700, 40, 650, 80, and 300. The answer is 1770. So now I'm going to subtract across. Do that. And my final answer is going to be $99,000 and $230. There's the final amount I have. So now I can create a post closing trial balance. And I do this just like a regular trial balance, except I just I leave out the accounts that have zero balance. So cash is $99,230. And then I've got supplies that are worth $300. And then I've got capital, $99,530. And as you can see, uh, these two, they total up to the same amount. I'll type it in correctly. 99. 530. It's the total on both of these sides. And so I